Welcome to this episode of Real Chemistry. I'm Dr. Morris. Today we're going to be talking about Jablonski diagrams, which are going to help us understand the process that you might know as fluorescence. And so if you take a look at all these brightly colored fish down here, they're all fluorescing. They're all giving off light in the visible. But to do this, to get them to, to glow, we had to shine UV light on to these fish. And you might wonder, okay, what's going on here? Why is it that you put high energy light on the fish and then they glow in the visible? Jablonski diagrams are going to help us understand that process. They're also going to help us understand a related process called phosphorescence. So first, what I'm going to do in this video is show you the full Jablonski diagram. And then I'm going to build it up piece by piece so that you can understand it. You're going to be overwhelmed when I show you the full Jablonski diagram. There's too much stuff going on to introduce it all at once. But this is our goal. This is what we're going to build up to. All you need to know is we have a bunch of states here and we're pushing electrons between them through different mechanisms, either interacting with our environment and giving off heat. All those squiggly lines are about giving off heat or by giving off light or absorbing light. So let's take a look at each of these processes step by step. First, I'm going to orient you just to what these energy diagrams are saying. You'll notice that I have S0. That is the ground electronic state. So we're talking about an electron here, starting out in the ground state. So we could have two electrons paired. Notice that those paired electrons, one spin up, one spin down, have a net spin of zero. And that means that they're in a singlet state. And that's in fact what this S stands for, singlet. And it means that their spin equals zero. However, later on, if one of our electron spins flip, we'll be in the triplet state, which is what this T stands for. And there, the spin will not be equal to zero. So that's what those S's stand for. S0 is the ground electronic state, also known as the uh, highest occupied molecular orbital. S1 is the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. And T1 is also uh, a LUMO, but now we're in a triplet state where our electron spin has flipped. What's up with all these different lines? Well, all of that is the ground electronic state. That is our electrons in the highest occupied molecular orbital. But the different lines here represent vibrational states. So our molecule can be in the ground electronic state, but it can be vibrating either a little bit, which would correspond to like right here, or it can be vibrating a ton, which would correspond to like right here. So this manifold of lines we have represent different vibrational states of our molecule. And that's gonna be important when we start to understand fluorescence and phosphorescence. So let's talk about absorption, the very first step in our Jablonski diagram. Light comes in, whoop, some photon. It's usually a UV or visible photon, and it's gonna be absorbed and it's gonna take one of our paired electrons and it's going to kick it up to an excited state but it'll stay spin down and that means our net spin is still zero that means we're still in the singlet state notice that it's gone from the ground vibrational state where most of our molecules start and the ground electronic state where nearly all of our molecules start up to an excited electronic state and an excited vibrational state so notice that it's up here in this like third line here that means it's excited vibrationally and electronically. So this is the very first step. There's an absorption of our photon uh, and the electron gets kicked up in energy and the molecule starts vibrating. And it can start vibrating in all different ways. This is just one example where it's gone to the third vibrational state. So that's absorption, step one. What's the next step? Well, once our molecule is up in its excited state, the next thing that happens is vibrational relaxation. And that's where our molecule interacts with its surroundings and the electron or I'm sorry, the molecule gives up some of its vibrational energy as heat to its surrounding. That's called vibrational relaxation. And we draw that with a squiggly line. And when that occurs, it'll go down to the very bottom of our uh, excited state. Basically, it's given up all of its extra vibrational energy, but it's still in the LUMO. It's still in the excited electronic state. So our molecule was vibrating a little. It absorbed a light. It was vibrating more, and our electron got farther away. And now, after vibrational relaxation, it's vibrating slowly again, but our electron's still excited. Then what can happen, we're already at fluorescence. Notice I've labeled fluorescence 3A over here because there's a bunch of different things that can happen at this point. But one of them is fluorescence. Our electron relaxes all the way down to the ground singlet state and gives off a photon. So that photon, when given off, notice is lower in energy than our first excited, uh, than, our, than our first absorbed photon. Our absorbed photon went into an excited uh, electronic state and some of that energy was given off as heat. And now when it emits a photon, it's at a lower energy. So that's your answer as to why UV light shined on these fish gives off visible light. UV light shine on them, some of that energy is lost through vibrational relaxation, and then it emits a photon as fluorescence. Okay, what else can happen to our electron if it's in that excited state 
It's vibrationally relaxed. It can fluoresce, but other things can happen. Let's look at that. The other thing that can happen is vibrational relaxation plus internal conversion. And what we're looking at there is basically our electron goes back down to the singlet state by giving up its energy as heat. It's a non-radiative recombination. So fluorescence will be called radiative recombination. That's where we're radiating energy as light. Non-radiative recombination is when all that energy is given off as heat. It's called vibrational relaxation because it's giving off energy as heat. It's called internal conversion because it's changing electronic states. So that's what makes uh, the purple different from our green. Our green's just vibrational relaxation. The purple is vibrational relaxation and internal conversion. That is, it's going from the singlet excited state to the singlet ground state. That's 3B. So there's actually another thing that can happen in step three. It can also undergo what's called inner system crossing, which we'll use orange for. Inner system crossing is in a transition from a singlet to a triplet. So over here, right, we have, uh, after our vibrational relaxation, our electron, and let's say it's spin up. Well, if it's spin flips, right, and it goes to spin down, and our electron that it was paired with is also spin down, now it has a net spin that's not zero, and so it's in the triplet state. So inner system crossing is a transition from a singlet state to a triplet state. All right, that, that, that electron then, goes through vibrational relaxation. Notice that this inner system crossing is a straight line on this energy diagram. That means it's not changing in energy. It's just jumping from the singlet to the triplet state. And now it's in an excited vibrational state in the triplet. So the next thing it's gonna do is vibrationally relax once again to the ground state of the triplet. And finally, we can have emission from our triplet state that's known as phosphorescence. Our electron goes back down to the original state, the singlet ground state and emits another photon. Notice that, that's a really ugly way to write photon. Notice that if something goes undergoes phosphorescence, it's given off even more energy under vibrational relaxation. So the energy of our absorbed photon will be highest, then the energy of the fluoresced photon, then the energy of the phosphorescence photon. This is your Jablonski diagram. That's it. So if you have questions about what each of those steps are, please ask them below. But let me tell you a little bit about a few key facts you should keep in mind for these Jablonski diagrams. One is that our emitted light is always lower in energy than our absorbed light because some of the energy will be given off as vibrational relaxation. Phosphorescence is lower energy than fluorescence because additional energy has been given off as a vibrational relaxation. And phosphorescence is slower than fluorescence because before it can relax, right? Before the step five can happen right here, it has to spin flip, it has to, the electron has to flip in its spin, and that takes time. So phosphorescence is slower. Finally, vibrational relaxation will always warm up our surroundings. So our energy that comes in as light energy ultimately will be split up between vibrational energy, that is heat given off to the surroundings, or light that comes back out. But all of our energy has to be accounted for. It always has to be conserved. So thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry on the Jablonski Diagram. If you have any clarifying questions, please ask them below. Go visit my channel to see more PCHEM videos. Thanks for watching.